Happy Arvo, welcome back. Hello. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm a little bit afraid to watch this video. I mean, look at these thumbnails. Who is this dude? Pugman99 says, Ryan, look up Michael Park Parkinson. Barry Humphreys, L Sir Les Patterson. This excerpt from the Parkinson show, interview show on Oz has Sir Les as a guest. I will just let you find out for yourself. A classic Oz pol political caricatures that this went to air in prime time will blow your mind. Then look up. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're just going to do this one for today. Um, a clap. I, I, I don't even know what... I, honestly, I don't, I'm not following here perfectly what this guy is saying. Pugman, I mean, thank you for this suggestion, and I think I'm going to try to watch it, but this excerpt from the, the Parkinson's interview show in Oz has Sir Les. I don't know who that is. I will let you find out for yourself. Okay, fair enough. A classic in Oz political caricatures. I don't know what I don't know what this means. But what he says that this went to air in a prime time will blow your mind. Okay. So I guess that's this one. I'm a little confused, but this thing has two million views, so it must be something. The dude is scary. Tonight is one of the most celebrated Australian statesmen of modern times. He started his career as the entertainment officer at a club in Sydney and has risen to the heights of being the Australian cultural attaché to the court of St. James. I couldn't agree more with the critic who said that he impugns the fundamental refinement of the Australian character. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Les Patterson. <laughs> dude literally looks like a caricature come to life. I mean, he calls it a, a classic in Oz political caricatures. He literally looks like a caricature. He has a, wow, that is quite a look. He looks like he is a caricature from a dude from 300 years ago. Beautiful. Good luck to you. And hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Is he a comedian? I'm so confused. Is this his legit look? His hair is crazy. His teeth are crazy. And hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, I must do a handful of Vaseline or something. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling too bad. <laughs> okay, so this is not... You know what? I have to look this guy up. Like, I'm so confused. He's a fictional... Okay, then. Thank God. I was concerned here for a second. Uh, yeah. Of course, images. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mike. What is it? I've got in my hands. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ointment I'm supposed to use. <laughs> I, was, I was just giving myself a quick application before the show. I'm supposed to use an applicator, but I generally do. No worries. Now, let's, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> he looked down at him, wiping off his hand. <laughs> now, let's, let's talk. <laughs> You'll be all right on your next trip to the Philippines, mate. <laughs> What is all over his fingers there? Oh my god. My thumbnail for this is about to be crazy. I mean, look, look at this. Are you with me? No worry. I'm not with you. I don't know what's going on. Now, this thing about image is obviously terribly important to me. That's part of your job. Now, what is it? What's the image that you're trying to, to project? I think you'd better phrase that again, Michael. I think it, <laughs> what is the image that I am bloody successful in projecting, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? And that is, as a, Australia, as a thinking organism. <laughs> you know, it wasn't very many moons ago. What you do to old Brian Humphrey, you'd... 
I can't get over the shimmer on his lip. That shimmery slobber he's got on his lip. <laughs> Headley, the poor bastard was ashes. <laughs> this is really a caricature of what I would think of as a British man, not a Australian man, which is partly what's so part that's throwing me off for one thing. It's very interesting. Obviously, you know, they have a lot of history, Australia and Britain, so <laughs> Headley, the poor bastard was ashes. <laughs> I seen him out there. Who's that guy in the audience? Oh, Christ, you must have given him a rough time. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about getting on the grog. Oh, Christ, eh? Hey? It's stuck into him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very good to be here on the Parky Show. You know, you could say this is the International Year of Australia already, couldn't you, Mike? Well, you could. It's been fantastic, the publicity we're getting, and largely due to the efforts of my good self. You know, it wasn't many moons ago that they thought we were a bunch of rough diamonds down. But, you know, we've got more culture than a penicillin factory in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Don't zoom in on that. Don't worry. Well, I suppose that they talk about culture, the main thing that people know Australia for now, the, the movie industry, the films, Australian films. Have you got anything to do with them at all? Yes, I kicked it off. You did you? Mm. Oh, yes, I was... Uh, I was very much instrumental in getting movies off the ground in Australia. They'd been going along a long time with Chip Rafferty and that uh, fraternity, but they needed to... I'm going to have to look that up. Chip Rafferty? be dragged kicking and screaming into the 20th century, Mike. Mm. And, uh, and you were the man to do it, of course. Of, <laughs> I'm very proud of the role. I'm very proud of the role that I've played there. Holy hell. You know, the trouble with the film industry, as it is with the yachts in general today, is that the, the poofter element. <laughs> now, oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind what people do in the privacy of their own homes. Don't get me wrong on that score, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what you mean, poofter. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't mind what people element. As it is with the yachts in general today, is the, the, the poofter element. Poof, poofter. Now, I don't know what that is. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind what people do in the privacy of their own homes. Don't get me wrong on that score, ladies and gentlemen. Please. We heard ya. We heard ya, Sir Les. <laughs> you know, I see eye to eye with old Ken Livingston in that particular map. You know, I, I know I'm pronouncing that hor horrifically. I'm sure it's like Sir Lay Patterson. No? Yes? But what I'd like to say is this, that, you know, there are a lot of, uh, the industry needs a fair bit of weeding out, and, uh, you know, it's rife with the poofters in Australia, as it is. Okay, I'm looking that word up. Poofters. Poofter. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's one way of putting it. A poofter. What, what, where'd that come from? P poofter. Who, who makes up these words? People still say that over there? <laughs> Poofter. You know, uh, I had a lovely idea for a film oh a few years God. ago. It was going to be called, it was about a football team uh, going to the bush. It was called Piss Up on Hanging Rock. <laughs> and uh, to the bush, it was called Piss Up on Hanging Rock. <laughs> and uh, by the time. No, are you with me? By the time the poof... I'm not with you still. Mafia or the poof... I'm... Uh, no! Are you with me? I'm By trying. the time the poof mafia, or the poofier as I call them... <laughs> the poof mafia. ...had got onto that, they'd cut, turned them all into Sheila's, drifting around in the nursery curtains... <laughs> And getting eaten by the abos in there. <laughs> well, what about a film like Gallipoli, which has had tremendous critical acclaim both here and in the movie? Yeah, you see, the movie industry's got out of my hands. Gay Lippoli, in my opinion, is a better description of that film. Two fellas, I don't say they're shirtlifters. I don't say that. I don't say they're shirtlifters. But they could be. They could be, and that's how it comes across, you know? Giving the Turks the wrong idea. You know? Mind you, they've had the wrong idea for a year or two, haven't they, eh? 
Do you know many uh, people within the film industry intimately, though? I mean, I'm thinking of actors or actresses. I wouldn't even know what to say to this guy. <laughs> I'm so... He, he, I'm completely thrown off watching this. Many uh, people within the film industry intimately, though. I mean, I'm thinking of actors or actresses. <laughs> Well, I do, naturally. I've had to... <laughs> you hear the boys in the band over there, for God's sake, eh? That'll do, fellas, eh? <laughs> no, I've been a bit... I've done a bit of casting, Mike. I have. I've done a bit of... I mean, it's not for nothing I'm known as the Protestant Lou Great. I'm not... I'm... Lou Great. Oh, yeah, and we've got a lot in common, you know, well, with a couple of tycoons. And it's significant, isn't it, that old Lou's enterprise is being taken over by an Aussie corporation, an Aussie conglomerate. A conglomerate. And uh, they're a bit afraid, of course, that it'll lose its Englishness, but old Lord Grey, English? Well, rumour has it he's a Bulgarian tap dancer. I don't know. <laughs> but he's very nice and a close personal friend, I hate. Ah. Uh. Oh, uh, can he, like, suck that back in? Tap dancer, I don't know. <laughs> but he's very nice and a close personal friend, I hasten to yes, say. Well, you've got many, many friends. But a lot of the actresses, you know, I mean... Uh, They're just not even going to acknowledge what just spilled out of his mouth? I know them all personally. I can't name names on this show because, uh, you know, there's been moments when... When my fidelity to my wife has been put to a pretty severe test <laughs> and come off second best, I can tell you. <laughs> can you think of, uh, of any, I mean, was this a question of girls being being forward, being uh, oh, overwhelmed by your sexuality? I do get a bit. You know, I, was, uh, I had an embarrassing experience uh, in a London taxi. Uh, hmm? uh, yes. We were, I had this little lass. <laughs> she was a star of one of my films. And uh, we, I was showing her the sights of London, you know, Buckminster Castle, St Paul's Abbey, <laughs> Trafalgar Circus, and we're driving around. And I kid you not, you know, this little Sheila done a streak in the back seat of the car. Yes. I didn't know where to look. <laughs> and we got to our destination. The driver says, that'll be so-and-so, you know. And uh, he says, how are you going to pay me? And she, fl oh, I'm sorry, I can't say it, but she done an Erica. <laughs> An Air who's Erica? She done an Erica, but not the top part. She flashed the map of Tasmania, ladies and gentlemen. Now, no. For those of you who aren't too crash out of the geography, Tasmania is a triangular continent. <laughs> a bit on the bushy side. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Why? To cut a long story short, the driver said, haven't you got anything smaller? <laughs> well, did, uh, I'm speechless. Yeah, blow my, it did blow my mind, and I'm speechless. I don't know what I I want to I want to read a little bit more about him to be honest. I need I just need I need I don't know. So Barry Humphreys, okay, got it. A dame and okay. He's from Sydney. Uncouth. Okay. Okay. Wow. That was a lot. Uh, and this was on primetime television, huh? That's awesome. Oh my god. Woo! Okay, well, I'm kind of excited to watch part two. It's it's difficult to follow, given the amount of old old Australian references and just... I don't, yeah, mostly that and his accent and some terms like puffter. I don't know, do people still say that? <laughs> wow. Uh, happy Arvo, guys. That was, that made my Arvo just a little more happy and confusing. Uh, have a great day. I hope to see you again tomorrow. I'll be here. Maybe I'll watch part two tomorrow.
I don't have anything else planned, so maybe I'll do that. Uh, subscribe if you want to see some more Australian reactions. And either way, thank you for watching. Goodbye.